Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So when I was in high school a few years ago, it's okay to laugh, I vividly remember my chemistry teacher helping our class understand some pretty complex and complicated stuff. And in the midst of our confusion and anxiety over the complexity of what we were hearing and what he was teaching, our teacher turned and faced the blackboard, and with chalk in his hand, he wrote four letters on the chalkboard. K-I-S-S. <laughs> All right, some of you know where this is going. KISS. Now, at first glance, that didn't seem to help very much, didn't seem to help a discouraging situation placed before us. That is until he described what the acronym KISS stands for. He slowly pointed at each letter, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> now, I get it. It may have been a little harsh, a little abrupt, but in that moment of symbols and elements, atomic mass and numbers, the instructor communicated a deep sense of hope to a perplexed classroom of students by reminding each and every one of us to keep it simple. Now. I have adopted that acronym ever since as my own, and I remind myself regularly to keep it simple, Schmidt. <laughs> now, perhaps this is a good reminder for our daily lives, for they seem to be growing in complexity. One of my favorite movies, The Shawshank Redemption, tells a story of an inmate named Brooks who was sentenced to 40 years in prison. It was towards the end of the 19th century. And after 40 some years in prison, when he was released, he was asked a question, what had changed? And his simple yet profound response was that the world around us seems to have gotten itself into a great big mess because it appeared to be so unbelievably busy, in a constant hurry, if you will. And the truth is, we haven't slowed down. We live in a country that is busy, busy, busy. We live in a country that gives us countless choices. Just search for a restaurant near you on your phone or look for a product or a service on the internet. Step foot in a grocery store. Seek to find something to watch on television when you have channels and countless streaming platforms to choose from. And so in the face of so many choices, the world around us seems to become more complex, more busy every single day. And the question then is, in that reality, is it possible for us to keep things simple in the midst of all that is placed before us? Now, sometimes we are our own worst enemy and end up making things significantly more complex and complicated than they need to be. And we create that proverbial nest of tangled fishing line full of knots that leads to pretty deep frustration. Now, the truth is, we do the same with our faith as well. Sometimes we make the Bible and we make faith far more complicated than it needs to be. And that can be frustrating too. So how would you summarize the Bible? How would you summarize the good news? How would you summarize everything that has taken place? And as challenging and as overwhelming as that may be at first glance, Jesus accomplishes it in just eight words. Jesus overwhelms the complexity of the Bible with clear simplicity 
when he says, love one another as I have loved you. Eight words. Eight words to summarize 66 books, 1,189 chapters. Eight words. Love one another as I have loved you. Today we find Jesus still at the Last Supper where he is teaching and he goes on to teach for four chapters, giving a long dialogue about many things. And it's here in chapter 15 that we hear these grand and beautiful words about love. As my Father has loved me, so I have loved you, he says. And as I have loved you, so you are to love one another. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This commandment is so very, very simple. And yet Jesus doesn't just say love one another and leaves it at that. He goes on to describe this love and offers up concrete examples He says, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And then he goes on to talk about friendship and choosing us and calling us to bear much fruit, fruit that will last. He says, love one another as I have loved you. And in Jesus, you and I we have concrete examples of what love looks like when we reach out into a world in need. Now in this passage, the language of love, and we hear that language many times, the language of love is always the Greek word agape. And why is this important? Because this is the highest form of love. This is the highest form of charity. It's God's love for you and me and our love for God. And this is truly marvelous. This is truly wondrous. It's concerned about others. And this love is modeled by the very relationship between God and Jesus, between Father and Son. And this is the love that becomes a transforming power of good in our world, not just some distant, ambiguous feeling. This is the way we are to love each other. But first... How did Christ love us? At what point in time did God's love shine more brightly on the world than at any other time? At what point did God's love become the clearest to all of those around? When was Jesus' finest hour when he communicated the very depth and breadth of God's love for you and me and the whole wide world? I think most people would answer when he died on the cross. As Jesus was being killed on the cross, he looked out at those who were crucifying him and taunting him, and with a look of compassion in his eyes, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. I think that was perhaps Jesus' finest hour of love. He had every reason to turn his back on those who hurt him throughout his entire earthly ministry. He had every reason to turn his back on those who pounded nails into his hands and pierced his side, and yet the words he speaks from the cross were not words of blame, but rather they were words of love and forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. I think that was perhaps Jesus' finest hour of love. And Jesus says to you and me, love each other in the same way, and I believe that is exactly where Christ challenges you and me to keep it simple. In the complexity of the Bible's 66 books, 
1,189 chapters, we encounter an overwhelmingly simplicity from a man known for his power to release people from their afflictions of leprosy, paralysis, and blindness, from a man who liberated those possessed by demons and ate with tax collectors who were despised, from a man who went to the cross and gave up his life so that our life may never end, so death never has the last word. In the complexity of the Bible's 66 books, 1,189 chapters, Jesus reduced it down to eight simple words. Love one another as I have loved you. In this simple command, we find the very foundation and summary of everything in the scriptures. And as disciples, our deepest joy then is to share Christ's love and peace out into the world. So in the complexity of your daily lives, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Slow down and pause and ask yourself, how has God shown God's love for you? And then, how can you show and share God's love with those around you? And when we reach out, when we reach out into a world in need in this way, I promise you, we discover and make a joyful noise to all the earth. Let it be so. Amen.